Good morning, everybody. It is Saturday, Gentile July 2nd, 2022 at 9 a.m. It's actually 9.08 a.m. And it is time for the Angelus and the Psalter. Alexa, cancel. Okay. Uh, a quick word on Gentile, the month of Gentile lie. All right. Now, uh, obviously, you can see this is a joke on like July, July, and Gen so Gentile lie, right? But I realized yesterday that if I went to, you know, if it was just a one-day joke, and I went back to J <laughs> went to July to today, it would just wouldn't look good. So I mean, so what we're gonna do, just to be fun, is we're gonna split the month up evenly. And so July won't start until the 17th. <laughs> or, or we're going to split, you know, to be totally even, it's going to change, it's going to have to change to 12 hours. We might do that. I don't know. Either that or the Jews will get uh, one extra day of calling the Gentiles liars. I don't know. It doesn't make a difference. It's just to have fun. Okay. I also have something to explain after prayer here about uh, today and what's going to happen. Angelus Domini Nincy Avid Maria et Concepit Espiritu Sancto, Ave Maria Gratia Plena Dominus Tecum, Benedicta tu in Mulieribus et Benedictus Fructus Ventris Tui Jesus. Sancta Maria Mater Dei. Order pro nobis spectatorum both smilkins and order mortis nostre. Amen. Ece in chilla domini fiat mihi secundum verbum tuum. Ave Maria, gratia plena dominus tecum. Benedicta tu in mulieribus et benedictus fructus ventris tui Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei. Order pro nobis spectatorum both smilkins and order mortis nostre. Amen. Et verbum caro factum est ad abitavit in nobi. Ave Maria, gratia plena dominus tecum, benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in ora mortis nostre. Amen. Ora pro nobis sancta Dei genitris, ut digni et heciavor missionibus Christi, oremus. Gratiam tuum quesimus domini mensibus nostris impunde, ut qui angelo nunciante Christi filii tui incarnationem caniobimus, per passionem eis crucem, ad resurrectionis gloriam perdicamur, per idem Christum dominum nostrum, amen, in nomini Patri, et filii et spiritus sancti, amen. Psalm 116, I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication, because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I called upon him. The cords of death entangled me, the grip of the grave took hold of me, I came to grief and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord, O Lord, I pray to you, save my life, I pray you, save my life. Gracious is the Lord and righteous, our God is full of compassion. The Lord watches over the innocent. I was brought very low, and he helped me. Turn again to your rest, O my soul, for the Lord has treated you well. For you have rescued my life from death, my ears from my eyes from tears, and my feet from stumbling. I will walk in the presence of the Lord in the land of the living. I believed even when I said, I have been brought very low. In my distress, I said, no one can be trusted. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things he has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. 
Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his servants. O Lord, I am your servant, I am your servant and the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem, hallelujah. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A few things this morning. I, uh, I don't feel well. Um, I got, I, I, you know, it feels like a cold. Some kind of cold I'm coming down with or something. I don't know. I, I got I started noticing it last night. Uh, another thing is that I'm going to the post office this morning as soon as we finish here because I need to take my um, EBT card and mail it to my self-certified mail. Now, I get paid tomorrow. Um, and what I'm attempting to do mostly is, is prove, and I'm not going to explain why, although if you think about it, you might be able to put it together pretty easily from what I'm saying here. Um, but I don't want to get into why right now, and I probably won't for a while. But I'm planning to do this every month until I move out of here uh, because of a problem that happened before that I'm not seeking restitution for at least at this point, number one is like, there's no way to do it. But also, uh, I'm, it's not the money that I want replaced. But uh, I want to ensure that this doesn't happen again to the best of my ability. And that if it does, I want, I, I'll have legal proof that it did happen. Um, and that is to mail the card the day before I get paid. Okay. Certified mail to prove that it's not in my possession. And it wasn't in my possession. Couldn't have been in my possession. And then I'll have a date of delivery, probably, um, you know, probably uh, Monday, right? Because it's, uh, yeah, probably Monday. Um, if it were a Tuesday today, it would probably come Wednesday. So it was the same day you get paid. Um, which should be fine because la well, which should be fine for a few reasons. Number one, the last time this happened, it was as soon as I got paid. All right, it was like yeah. So, um, the parties involved could wait and do it later, but they don't know when I'm going to open the fucking envelope. You see. And I'm going to do that on video, and I have a way to prove the time and the date that I am opening it on video. All right, one of those ways is to browse to Google time and date and show that on there, on, the, on you know, show the entire process there. And the other way, I'm gonna do two ways, is to call the uh, National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST. They, they have a date, they have a number you can call and get the time and date. They used to have that back in the 70s. Like, everyone had that. You used to be able to call popcorn in San Francisco. So, uh, but, so I'm going to call that number. So, you know, we'll be reasonably sure of that. I'm going to show you every area of the envelope. Absolutely every area of the envelope. And what I may do is seal the card in plat. I mean, it's not really necessary because what you need to sort of prove... What you need to prove is that the envelope has not been tampered with. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. On a camera, there's no way to do that really entirely. That's the truth. You know what I mean? It can, I can, you know, it's a high resolution camera and I can show you that, but there isn't really, you know what I mean? It, it's, uh, I can look, you know what I mean? I can show you everything, the thing is, as it is, but like, there's still room for doubt in some people's minds. So what, here's the thing. 
You know what's going to stand up for that? The integrity and uh, the integrity, my own integrity, and the honesty that I have showed with everything else in these videos that I've talked about and everything that I'm doing. Do you think I'm lying about that? Given the rest of everything that's going on, probably not. You know, so I'm not going to say people go, I got no reason to lie. I think that's most retarded. You don't know. You know what I mean? I usually when people say that too, I'm like, I can think of a reason right before you finish that sentence. I thought of a reason. You know what I mean? Like it, it, it could be anything. You could be, I'm pissed off at, at, you know, so-and-so or whatever, you know, understandably because of another situation. You know what I mean? So I don't, you know, it's not, I, I, of course I have reasons to lie. Sure. Doesn't mean I'm doing it. And the evidence is overwhelming in support of my side that I wouldn't be. Anyway, now, if I think along the way, because I'm going to continue to do this every month, if I think along the way of a way to improve that, you know what I mean? Like, if I can, I can I, you know, um, we'll do it. But for right now, that's the best thing I can think of. Um, I'm going to make a video putting the card in the envelope. Might do the seal and plat. I don't know. It just seems superfluous a little bit to do that because if you know what I mean, you can easily do the same thing. If you tamper and got in the envelope, all you got to do is you know get some more plastic and seal it in there, and then do that. You know what I mean? I was gonna kind of put it in and put the card in a plastic bag and then kind of cut the ends off and then use a seal it with a, a lighter. You know, like you do with dope bags, but. Um, but, you know, no, because that's, I mean, I could just do the same, you know what I mean? If I really wanted to, if I was going to, if I was tampering with the envelope, I would just come home and then like tamper with the envelope, put it in new plastic and then, you know what I mean? So like, I, I guess there's no point in doing that. Um, so, so we'll leave it as is for now. The videos are not going to be on YouTube. I need to have the, I'm just going to be private and when they're needed, they'll exist. Okay. So, and also too, that's going to prevent the parties from knowing, uh, when I have opened, you know, the envelope. Cause that, you know, that's important as well, uh, for obvious reasons. So, and I'm not, my plan is to not go open it until I go to the AT, right to the ATM to take the money out that's in there, all of it. Okay, to protect myself because of this problem, which I have not said anything about. I did not complain to HSA about it. I did not complain to any, you know, and I did not complain publicly. I have not said anything about it until now. But I will say this: it left me with nothing but fifty-five dollars last month when I went to go early June when I went to go and the card was in my possession the entire time all right I was never in warm springs okay and money got stolen out of my account supposedly in warm springs and left me with 55 bucks on the day I got paid and I didn't even notice until days later because I had lost so surprisingly I had lost my wallet um, and when I found my wallet, finally, you know, like I, I knew, I knew that before I, what caused me to check on the money is that I lost my wallet. And I was like, well, nobody has my pin. That's another thing. Nobody has my pin or had. Nobody has my pin, but in this case, at that time. And the money somehow disappeared in Warm Springs on the day I got paid, but they didn't take all of it. You know what I mean? Like if somebody do the pin and knew that I somehow got paid on the third, wouldn't you take all the money out? Wouldn't you check the balance? Of course, of course you would. Anyway though, luckily, huh, I had money saved around the house or I would have been fucked last month. All right, it didn't put me in arrears. So I was all good. Um, but I sat and I thought about this and I was like, what is going, you know, what can I do? And I thought of the movie Quiz Show where they proved 
that the um, that the uh, Roberts, uh, I think his name, uh, James Snodgrass was the guy's name. James Snodgrass had received answers ahead of time before his taping on the show Quiz Show Twenty One with Jack Barry, produced by Dan Enright, um, and he kept these envelopes in his at home until one day, like two years later. Do you know anything about being coached on 21 when you were on there? Uh, guess what? And that blew the whole thing wide open. In his case, he was trying to prove that he, he or he was attempting to prove that he had possession of information. I'm using the post of, you know, the, the same the thing. Now, registered mail, he, he sent him registered mail. Registered mail is the high, like that's the most secure official mail you can send in the US Postal Service. Um, it's expensive and, and it, they have certified mail right below it, which is like the same thing, but it doesn't have insurance on it. So it's a little bit, it's I think significantly cheaper. Um, so I'm going certified mail. This is, you know, just need registered mail is pretty pricey. I one time had a, 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 a spat with my landlord when I first moved here, the only one where I lost my cool. And I was so uh, angry at him. Now, I know it's gonna sound silly to you, like you were so angry you did what? That I uh, went to the post office and I sent him the rent registered mail. Because, you know, for, to make, to, for two reasons. Number one, to make a statement that like, I barely trust you to slip something in your door and say you got it. And number two, if you want this money, you're gonna have to fucking be here at this time when they show up to get it. Or you're gonna have to go to the post office. Because he's dicked me around so much on like, you know what I mean? on making me wait for stuff like that when he should have like, you know what I mean? A normal adult would like, would be responsible on the other end and he has never done that. So those, two, that was, that was the, you know, the impetus behind the whole um, registered mail rent. That was like two years ago, almost, or whatever. So, um, but anyway, now in this case, I want to uh, prove that I don't have it in my possession card is not in my possession during this time and see here's the problem a little bit of a problem like I mentioned with the tampered envelope thing is that even though I don't open it you know what I mean unless there's a way to sort of prove that it's unopened or or you don't have to necessarily prove because honestly let's face it you know if there's no way to prove and that's the only thing I can do I think it will suffice on its own, given my integrity and my level of honesty overall, it'll be pretty obvious to anyone who pays attention whether or not I'm lying. In fact, unless I was a really, really, you know, crafty liar, I probably wouldn't be sitting here talking about the drawbacks of having the, un, you know, of opening the, un, uh, opening the envelope on video and why it's not the same thing as like, having it inspected in person by somebody. Probably not, but it's possible, you know? Um, but anyway, so let's go ahead and uh, I'll get back to this later. And uh, let's go ahead and do medication. I gotta run to the pharmacy today also. And uh, I'm really excited to start this, you know, this therapy for the COVID-19 long hauler syndrome. Uh, we'll, see, we'll see what you know, comes of it. Um, it's better than doing nothing. You know what I mean? I've had to wait around for six months to finally kind of get this, to get this appointment and uh, to get started on, on something. So that's cool.
I mean, yesterday, for example, I also want to mention this for anyone that might see this video and is unfamiliar with some of my other video, you know, some of the stuff I discussed in my other videos. For example, you know, I talked yesterday about my doctor's appointment and being a drug addict, okay, and that I have been on drugs like most of the, you know, recently, like a lot of the time, maybe most of the time, you know, um, and I was concerned about how. I was going to know the medication. For example, since the medica since since the drugs mask the symptoms of my long haulers, you know, like I don't have the brain fog when I even even when I have residual effects of methamphetamine, I don't have the brain fog. I don't have the muscle uh, muscle pain, or as much of the fatigue. Um, and I I asked my doctor about it. I said like, how am I going to know? You know, I asked him like three different times. I I didn't get a straight answer out of him on that. So I'll have to figure it out myself, okay? But I've talked about I've talked about my sex life. I've talked about th things about drugs openly. I've talked about you know I've laid everything on the table. I talk about things that people are usually too embarrassed to talk about. I am very very candid, and it's all over my videos. If anybody needs any evidence of that, so. Um, the envelope is not going to be open until I open it. And I think most people will agree. I got no reason. Let me put it to you this way, too. I got no reason at all to fake it because I'm not trying to get any money. I'm not going back to HSA going, I want the money put back in my account. No, I'm not doing that at all. I have no reason. I'm not trying to gain anything. I'm trying to stop something from happening. It's a little different. All right. Even if I were in a court case, about this, because that's the eventual hope, honestly. You know what I mean? But you're, something like this, you're just waiting for the perfect storm, really. You can't, you know what I mean? It's like there's nothing I can do about it right now. But sometimes things happen laterally, and something happens, and you end up in court, and then boom! Now, you know what I mean? Now this comes into play. So, um, um, but yeah, you know, and, and I say that because honestly, justice should prevail. You know, it doesn't always prevail directly up front. Um, but you know, you shouldn't have, you shouldn't, my, my sink has been broken. My kitchen sink's been broken now since I think it was like March. And he is not going to, he's not going to fix it at all. Not going to fix it. I've narrated this several times. Um, and now, you know, I've gotten used to the bathroom sink. I'm cool with that. Like I've got, you know what I mean? It's, it's in the beginning, it, I mean, it would still be easier. I'm still aware of how it would be easier if I could use my own kitchen sink. But, um, but I'm very, you know, I'm used to it. I don't like walk around like, ah, ah, I, can't, ah, I can't use that, you know. But um, it's like, that doesn't mean that he should just go, I don't have to do that. In fact, he's required by law to do it, you know. So, I'm, I, you know, I'll just wait. I'll just wait. Maybe something will happen, maybe it won't. I don't know. But I will be ready. Um, and my eyes will be fixed, you know what I mean? I'll be ready for, for any opportunity that comes up. To, to write the situation. Um, it, honestly, it is not to get him. I pray for him and his father every day. Pray for my landlord and his, 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 father, his late father. They're on my prayer list and I pray for them every day and never with feelings of contempt.
I've prayed when I've been angry at Jack, of course. Not too much, because I haven't gotten too angry. But when I've been upset with him, which is bound to happen, and it's impossible to sort of get treated the way I have, and not have some feelings of, like, anger, or, you know, resentment. Um, and so that's fine. That's, you know, I've done that, but I've never, it's never been false when I prayed. You know, I've been angry at my dad in the same way. But not, you know what I mean? Never, never prayed with anything but genuine love. And that's what you got to do. So, all right. Let me write this down and get going because the post office closes at noon today. Um, and I want to make sure that, you know. All right. So we'll be adding a new medication. Soon here, then tracks alone. Um, You know what I was just thinking is uh, doctor said last uh, yesterday so just take the medicate take the nitraxone before you go to bed and if it if you don't sleep well on it take it in the morning he said and I'm like you know what first of all I don't have a regular bedtime I can tell you right now for my lifestyle uh, taking medicate doing anything before bed is means that it's gonna happen some days and sometimes not like so it's a horrible way to really schedule anything for me is at bedtime or when you get up um, assuming that it's going to be regular uh, so what we'll be doing is the medication will be taken same time every day with the rest of them since I can do that anyway since he said you know what I mean so that's gonna work you know um, I wish, you know what I wish though, I wish we had, and there probably, there are doctors out there like that, but it would be cool to run to some doctors that kind of go, aha, who am I dealing with here? I'm dealing with the drug addict. So I mean like, maybe like when you go to bed, if it's an amphetamine addict, you know what I mean? Like maybe that's not the, maybe that doesn't make sense. Like don't suggest routines that are not gonna, you know, work for the patient. Um, and they should know that. They're smart people. Um, all right, everybody, let me go ahead and log the rest of this and then get going. Because a lot of people, I'm going to tell you why this is, you know, I mean, it's important for obvious reasons, but a lot of people are not good, like I am, at kind of going, yeah, okay, well, let me put this into a workable form for my life. Because, you know, a lot of people are not, you know, they just don't do it. They won't take the medication or they won't, you know. Um, cause it's hard, it is hard to do sometimes. I'm not, you know, I do it, but it's, it's not easy sometimes to, you know, to, to, to follow through on that or to come up with the planners, you know, you really need to sort of have a, uh, I say obsession, but uh, like, I just, it's just something, I mean, I really enjoy problem solving. Um, and so, so it, yeah, it's like a game to me to sort of make these things work and come up with a system that's workable for my circumstances. But a lot of people don't look at it like that. It's just a pain in the ass or something like that to them, you know? So, um, all right.
And we did Psalm 116, right? Let me say 116. Excuse me. Excuse me while I go and rinse this out real quick. I'll be right back. All right, everybody, remember to brush your teeth, to floss, especially and most especially to say your prayers. And I'll see you in the next video. I love you all, and peace.